I think, I think, I think. I think we're on. Fuck yeah. Oh my god, that was such an ordeal. <laughs> dear, oh dear. I did not think this was going to happen. Especially after ladies and gentlemen and... Oh, what do you... Ladies and gentlemen and um, what would I say as like other other folk? Anyway, fuck, I'm getting hung up on... Ladies and gentlemen and others. And others, okay. Yeah. Um... Everyone in ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between. I got towed today, so I've been having a shit one with car trouble, so I'm already absolutely exhausted and off it. And then we just have like I don't know, would you say forty five minutes of like tech frustration and difficulties? <laughs> it probably was anyway. Oh my god, yeah. I am rinsed. I have zero capacity for tech stuff and after oh, the yeah. car oh. stuff that I also have yeah. zero capacity for. Fuck, love RSEV though, but I mean, they couldn't help me, but I did feel looked after just getting towed all the way home. Okay, so. Yeah, I guess so. I just, yeah, it's just so sensitive. Mate, this thing, mate, yeah, all right. Um, so, Liam, welcome. Uh, I might even just record an intro for this like later when I can articulate. Sure. Yeah. But, um,. I, I might just even launch into some like questions, uh, but would you would you like to introduce yourself and like why we're or would you prefer me to just start asking you some um, questions? I'll introduce myself. All right, beauty. Um, my name is Liam. You probably don't. No, I'm just like here. Yeah. Okay, my name is <laughs> Liam. Um. It feels like it's alcoholic anonymous. <laughs> I know. Alcoholics anonymous. I, I've been in a, I've been a furry for, <laughs> um, I don't know, like furry stuff has always been, I don't know why exactly it's been intriguing for me. I'm still on a long-term um, expedition to find that what that part of me really means to me, but it forms, also forms a very central part of the way that I operate um day to day in my life and started off as like a trippy idea that um I thought of on acid in a way and then you know sort of filtered down into um something really real for me and something very grounded in my own sense of spirituality and kink and um yeah sensuality sexuality and in different elements in my life, it's, you know, it's played out. And, um, you know, I think in, in that sort of animalistic primal furry embodying an animal, the animal at the human animal way, it, it has been, you know, very expansive in my own sex life and, um, made me feel a lot more of myself and, be able to do a lot of um, somatic expression in the moment as well and sort of help other people do that at the same time. And, yeah, and then, you know, it only gets weirder from here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is it my to talk? I just, like, fully, I just got lost in what you're saying. I was actually just trying to take a quick note to follow up and ask you about what you meant by somatic expressions and how you're helping facilitate that and others like how does like the fairy kind of um I don't know what you say lifestyle culture um perspective like how does that help you be more somatic or like do you mean like in your body and embodied and expressive um, I think yeah so I reckon we just leave it here and we go talk I think right. it'll be fine this is how Okay. Kind of done it. We just whoa, gotta whoa, knock whoa. it, not knock it over. Okay. Yeah, should be should be safe there. Um, then now some friends, you want that? Oh. We can just do this. Wait, leave it there. And then <laughs> that's gone. Um. I'll just sit up a bit because then we're at a similar height for the the box. Okay. So yeah. What was the question? The question? I don't know. Was I'll have a sm- yeah, yeah. Um. Um, I think that, you know, in, in the world, we're really trapped and, um, very emptied of all of our energy and sort of stifled in a way when 
we should be fiery and should have that passion and um, fire of our of our passionate intent um, and should be liberated and be liberal with the way that um, we express ourselves in our life um, through you know, like burping and farting, sneezing and, <laughs> and, and laughing and, and, and cursing and, um, you know, being loud and boastful and happy and boisterous and, um, like everything. And so when, you know, when it comes to like, you know, furriness in the bedroom, um, then like some of my favorite, um, sexual encounters have been, um, female bodied people, um, just being very like animalistic and especially when I have had long-term partners, mm-hmm. one in particular, um, where I could set, where we, we sort of knew what each other wanted and what, what we needed. And, you know, it's like, even like, <laughs> you know, arguments had devolved into like, you know, some like hot fiery sex. <laughs> when she's fucking through a, like, would she throw at me like a, of thing full of popcorn she like threw it all over me because she's so fucking angry about something else and for me it's like i'll i i because i practice martial arts like i'll eat that frustration and i'm just happy that that person got to express what they needed you know because it's like if they need to get that out and that for that level of frustration i don't think it necessarily matters um like if it is exactly in line with the thing it doesn't have to be about what you were frustrated about can just be frustration like put elsewhere and so just in that motion just you know like physically rolling and, and moving with somebody and then letting out all those sounds like growls and like you know guttural sounds and um you know just you know like like, the, like a lack yeah. of inhibition as well yeah, like lack of inhibition yeah and the freedom Freedom. Yeah, yeah, because so many people feel really uncomfortable, like making much sound or sounding a little too like animalistic or primal, or you know the sounds of like true like fucking intense fucking female fucking. female orgasm yeah. is like can be similar to like birth, like very guttural and like deep and like not like pretty like ah sounds, mm. you know, um, and. So I'm hearing that, like, furriness, like, like embodying, I don't know, a more the spirit of an animal, which is therefore more primal and animalistic and mm. close to nature, that, like, allows you to just bypass a lot of the conditioning that we've had that's, like, suppressing that level of, like, authentic expression. Yeah, yeah. Furriness is the... the gateway is that what you're saying for me, Fuck, for did me. i just encapsulate that, that was really, really well? that was great okay sweet but um, is, and is that is that like all furry culture is no, that your is your this expression? is my brand <laughs> that's cool i feel like are there other people that also enjoy this, these elements of it well every every person i've been with who has yeah. done that has that maybe very wouldn't much even identify it. as no, no. and it doesn't even necessarily like a like this is a furry thing this is what is happening yeah but that's how it happened and that's what yeah. it was we did you know and that and that to me looking back at it is what that was and so it's like it'd be but you know and i think it's exactly what you said because it's like we are sort of we have these all these modes and these like sort of default ways of being that have been programmed into us through pornography or through just like you know media in general like different like rom-coms and different like Mm. you know whatever kind of um you know various films and shit Mm -hmm. um and yeah it it doesn't it sort of stifles our expression as i said so if we can be this other thing if we can do this kinky whatever we can be this crazy character we can be this fantasy we can be this other thing we can be this like oh it's like i i have permission to make a sound because i'm not me i'm an animal Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. i'm not me i'm a i'm a princess slayer i'm uh Tomb Raider, I'm, um, you know, any yeah, of these and so things. It's like, so that's where the kink thing comes in and then frees people because they are able to it, step into something that maybe usually they wouldn't be comfortable with, but because it's it, it's like sidestepping the anxiety, being big yourself. 
you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, like, for me, it's like my worst nightmare. Like, I, I hate, I role play stuff really. Like, I don't know. I'm, I can't just get into, like, it really, I find it really difficult. And I guess that's like, you know, I actually used to love acting when I was younger and, um, and probably, you know, got teased and bullied and the creativity got kind of got crushed out. I mean, it wasn't like cool to do that. And then now I'm just like, Oh my god! If you threw me in a in an improv class, I mm. would literally spontaneously combust. I'd fucking hate it. Like I don't like acting or role play stuff now. Mm. Um, and so yeah, like even like sexual kind of kinks where there's role play involved, or like you know the idea of embodying an animal or whatever. Like I cannot think of anything that would make me more uncomfortable. Mm. Um, so it's very impressive to me when people have thrown off the shackles of those inhibitions and like insecurities or fears or whatever the fuck. I don't even know what it is. Like an internal judge of like that that's got the voice of like the cool teenagers I went to high school oh, with, man. you know, like, so it's really, it must be really liberating. Like that's yeah. fucking really cool. And like, yeah, it sounds a bit like, you've grappled with some shame around it as well and internalized yeah. fucking yeah i mean happens really often for me when i have sex generally because i feel a lot of shame and anxiety and everything gets heightened and it's a very it's a very sensitive space for me um so yeah when i can when a partner can meet me there and like help me just be expressive um you know by knowing each other well enough and you know, yeah, having for now the way I would do it is have have like proper pre talk, yeah, and then we're like we're talking about it, the do's and don'ts and yucks and yums, and you yeah. know, and then we're just you know, and then you know we talk about desires and things, but you know we have a little kinky, nice, fun conversation and develop it into into you know it's like it's it's not even necessarily I wouldn't say it's like foreplay, I would say it's it is sex in a way. Yeah. It's like the conversation can be spicy and make you feel good, you know, and sex is totally. basically just a good feeling, at, you know, at the base of it. So It's just amazing yeah. the level of, like, vulnerability that you need to be able to feel comfortable and safe with, like, to share that side and show that side of... Yeah, it takes a lot from me. You know, someone has to be really, you know very gentle and that's the thing is that like i think a lot of people have these like very um you know like little kinky things or like little desires or you know i think you know everybody's secretly a pervert deep down we, we just want to everyone's exp- secretly a, a pervert deep down a pervert. <laughs> like we want to we want to see we want to do we want to feel you know and i think when by people continuing along the trend of creating the kind of mental and physical and sexual safety that we are trying to do, then the more safety that we can um, put into action, then the more open and more exciting our sexual lives will be because we're allowing people like me, this is what would happen if somebody really made me feel safe, is that then uh, I'd be able to open that space for them and then, you know. And then, like, what does that, like, look like in the bedroom like like are we like role playing to oh man, being animals way. just making animal sounds like, uh, like i don't problem? know like 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 talk me through it because i just have no idea so there's like i think there's different there's different levels and there's different tiers i feel like you know like it's not all it's not all like those like american kind of fairy vibes of like animal suit costumes and big like well, um, big for, animal heads you know, that's like that's the but it's not all no no that's not what it is to me but that's like i respect them for <laughs> that's like the main doing what they're doing i guess it's like a caveat you know it's 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 nice to be able to explain that, that realm of furriness to, well yeah i want to cover you know. that as well like because it's interesting because i i just have only seen a couple of docos on that like the a, vice one yeah, yeah and maybe like a channel five or something i don't know uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like it's you know the, at the conventions where there's like so out. many and there's so much community and it's like you know i think you were describing to me once like the idea of especially as like a socially anxious person or a neurodivergent yeah, person yeah. or an introvert or yeah. like you know someone who just 
like to go and wear a costume and have like a full mask over their head and like all they have to say all evening is like meow if they want or they yeah. can chat to people or nothing and they like the get to be sign. around other people and yeah. like be in a social space without the anxiety of yeah like i don't know i was just like whoa i never thought about it like that i thought it was just a like sex kink mm. you know so there's different like facets of it that people enjoy and i imagine like some enjoy certain facets like more than others like maybe someone yeah. who's like really into the actual first sona which i want to talk about mm. like the first sona animal suits and stuff like like i imagine they have like sex flaps that they can leave the suits <laughs> on and fuck while yeah. they're wearing them yeah. and stuff yeah so like that's like one end of the spectrum and then your expression of it has been really fascinating to like talk to you about because it's mm. it's not as much about the sort of costume and the I don't yeah. know. So yeah, so actually, like, you know, quite a bit less about that. I wish I had that courage to, you know, put all that effort in and then go to those conventions and meet those people. That's a big. Um, that would take a lot of courage to go there and to express your kink openly and and. But and I think publicly. there's way more of it in yeah. America, and they have full conventions mm. for it, so yeah, they, they wouldn't even they would feel comfortable there because it's like these are my people. Yeah. It's harder in Australia, no. Yeah, it is, and maybe you go to Comic Con, you see one person, but it's like you know, it's like yeah. not necessarily like you know, I'm not saying I've even looked that deeply either. There could be like little niche communities that I just mm. don't know about. Um, if you know about any niche fairy communities, let us know because it's hard to find. Yeah, totally. Um, but you, what was your question? Just like, what is it? What does it look like? Yeah, I um, guess so. Yeah, maybe if if you if people don't know what fairiness is, or oh, you, you want to talk about fairiness, not about how I maybe a both, maybe both. like the you know um, mainstream. Can we say mainstream fairy? Okay, yeah. so we'll contrast them. So like. Um, mainstream fairy what's well, nice funny no it's, that's why i put like a uh, quote yeah. quotation Ma- quote mainstream mainstream fairy um is the like, majority maybe yeah the majority of people who do fairy stuff sort of they make the costumes they have a first so first of all they have a fursona and their fursona is like a, an idealistic version of themselves um with all the character traits that they would wish that they had all the confidence that they wish they had all the you know, maybe it looks sexy or they've drawn a sexy version of it, or maybe not. Maybe it looks strong. Maybe it looks, and maybe strong is sexy to them. Maybe it's so many different things. Um, and that forms a, a fursona and an identity that they can choose to um, replicate with a um, a full fursuit that it cust- that is custom made, um, and you know, wear it, embodying this character talking like this character does, being excited, being proud, being silly, being, you know, conniving, being, whatever, like, you know, character they want to um, enact. And mm. that to me was always beautiful because it meant that, you know, it's just like for me with video games, it was always the same thing. I could be a character as well, you know, and that mm-hmm. character wasn't me and that character could be confident and that character could be interesting and you know, all that stuff and all yes. this, all the things that I was lacking in terms of like a sense of self-worth. Yeah. Um, and so I guess how that compares to me is like a, they, the furries that go to the conventions, they'll build the suits, they'll just talk about furry things, you know. They'll yiff. They'll furry yiff. sex is called yiffing, which <laughs> I found so, that really tickled me. Um, <laughs> it's so cute. It's such a cute yiff, way. Yiffing is so, it is so cute. Yeah. And I guess that's like, I mean, is that part of it? Because the fairy suits seem more cute than tough. Like, yeah. is part of the appeal like, um, it's just cute. like fucking cute animals that are like, <laughs> I don't know, it's just cute like, um, anxious humans who find it very difficult to interact. And I think there's a lot of humans out there like that who are a bit more anxious, but that gives their brain so much energy for their sexual desires. So then they, what if, when you, when you get there with them and you're a safe enough person, then the way they'll open up to you is like, is, is you know, there's, it doesn't, it's almost like a waterfall of like a torrent of all this like interesting fun stuff that they want to try. And, you know, yeah. And I think that that's Whoa. what the, the community is. <laughs> that's particularly that's me that's who i am like you know because it's just because my sexual energy is based on how much people can make me feel safe um and how safe i can make the situation myself and you know all that mm. sort of stuff and so how it works out for me um how, how um fairness is for me is that 
um, you know, you can see these things around my neck. The the one, the two different walls. One's a um, this one's made of um, uh, uh, malachite. This is my yin. This is my yang. Little snow wolf. And the, they're like wolf carvings for the listeners. I, yeah, no, like, it's just um, an audio podcast. Though, so. <laughs> um, and then yeah, so they like they form a a central part of my um, my yin and my yang in my life and my own sense of spirituality and um, you know give me a sort of a, 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 because it's, I've got autism and um, ADHD and OCPDs CPTSD um, lots of the old things then being in reality can be really hard for me a lot of the time and so then I choose to embody the character of either of these um, like these wolves or the, or the wolf I am to help me operate in my life and, and hold my head high and be confident. Um, and so and that forms a sort of central part of my, of who I am, because that's who I actually genuinely see, truly see myself as, you know, and I, and I know it doesn't make any sense and it's like a spiritual sort of blah, blah thing, but it is like, I've seen it enough times in my life and, you know, came to it in the right ways, and I still see that image when I'm on the right path. Like I saw that neon sign today, that was little, you know, it looked like a wolf. It's like it just means it's always been signs to me that I'm, you know, things, you know, synchronicities are happening, and I'm on the right track towards stuff. So that's like spiritual side. Then mm. sexual side is like when I'm in the bedroom, like with people who I've had a longer connection with, which is now the only sort of thing I want because I realize how much better sex can get. Um, um, because of the deeper level of word, connection word, and word. how much I can know people and mm-hmm. getting to all these like kinky things and these fun stuff. And, you know, so I don't need to just keep, um, like flipping the body, you know, like next body, <laughs> next body, next yeah, body, yeah. next body. It's like, you know, actually want to invest in a human being and then see if they're the kind of, um, human being that aligns with me. And then, um, if they align with me, then, you know, we'll have great sex and we'll have a great, um, relationship. But when we get deeper, um, then I've explained all this to them and um, we can connect in, in that way where I can, you know, I can growl and, I, you know, I can, you know, you know, um, like the, or the, you know, yeah, like, like, animals. like and, again, and especially when you're having sex and you're really with somebody else who's very, really fiery, um, and strong physically, then you can wrestle a bit and, you know, it's just hot. It's just like sexiness. Um, and then, you know, you play with the, you know, the level of desire in that way. And, you know, like, it's like the, one of the best times I've ever had was just like, it's like we were two animals, like trying to kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> having you know? sex? Yeah. And then but having sex at the same time. And then it was like, you know, and then, you know, lots of check-ins and clear and clarity you know, to make sure everything was all good, but we had a developed relationship. So it's like you're, you know, you're trying to kill someone, something that also, but also fuck it at the same time. It was, wow. it, that was like, oh, man, thinking about that, man, so, so beautiful. Um, and, the, you know, the, all those growls and expression, the anger, it's like I recognise that from training martial arts it, that, that, again, it doesn't matter where the frustration comes out, it just matters that it does. And if it's in an open, sensual pleasurable space then i feel like it gets the where it gets caught is a very um, strong vessel Mm. you know and so it can be to me you know it can be as simple as you know just when i'm with people just checking them a little bit and growling and doing things and you know if they think it's weird or they don't like it then it's just not the right person for me Right, so yeah, is that how you kind of like? How do you test the waters with a new person? Do you come out and say like, "Hey, I'm a fairy," or like, do you kind of (laughs) just gauge it by starting to like purr a bit here and there, or like, how do you fucking? Well, it's like I've tried so many different ways, (laughs) but it's like I I just feel like you know you just got to let people know who you are, you know. So it's not like you you don't waste their time. It's such a misunderstood thing as well. I feel like it's like if they want to understand it. If someone came out, no, if someone came out was like sexually to me because I'm fucking vanilla nil and I don't have pretty much any kinks. Like 
and I really didn't understand what like fairiness was and um like honestly like in earlier years like it's pretty easy to make fun of like it got a lot of it copped a lot of shit like yeah. so, so nice. and so if someone was like hey I'm into you but I'm like I'm also I just should let you know I'm a fairy I would think of the vice docker and be like oh fuck no I'm not into that I'm sorry <laughs> but if you were like if I was getting to know you and you were like just slowly sneaking little bits <laughs> in of like just like you know <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. Maybe you could sneak it, sneak it up on me. And also, since having like chats about this, I'm starting to um, come to understand it so mm. much differently, at least through your lens. And I'm like, oh, if I can get that, that sounds great. Actually, like yeah. it's not my thing. I don't really think I could maybe ever be that uninhibited to get into it. Also, mm. not really sure if it would even feel authentic to me. Mm. Um, but it's fucking cool. <laughs> So anyway, 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 yeah, how do you go about it? Like, now, what do you reckon is the best approach? I think it's different. Like, you know, if anybody is interested in doing those things for themselves, it's just like, I think literally physically, biologically, we are an animal. We literally are a mammal, you know, and I think that we do have these very primal sounds that come out during sex. And I think it, it's just as simple as just letting those sounds out and honoring that that is a, a, a part of your pleasure in the world. And also that sound, you know, laughter sounds like freedom, but so does pleasure mm. in any form, really laughter, everything, mm. maybe just expression is freedom, you know? So like, then at what point do you go, Hey, do you want oh, to like, put a on a costume? <laughs> you want to put on a costume and do some animal role play? I think that's like, that's a really far down the track for me. Right. You know, it's like people, I need to be really sure that people are like the safe, you know, right person, you know, and that's a whole, that's a whole thing, you know? So I want to be, make sure that it's a secure connection. So if I get yeah. all this stuff ready, you know, it's like there's all, and there's different ways to do it. You know, get all the stuff ready. Like, what like, so, from, so the sexiest way I've seen it done on a female body person is, um, let me just save the microphone. Look at me. Um, I mean, you did it. <laughs> just oh, oh. Um, um, the like the sexiest way I've seen it done on female body people in in real life because there's obviously like the whole anthropomorphic. Um, pornography scene which is another whole oh yeah we gotta talk about that <laughs> um, and, and then um is this like so butt plug tails oh my god epic butt plug tails poor socks poor socks squishy poor oh, socks oh, oh yeah so, like, okay on, on your foot yep. just like here here and here on your big toe on the ball of your foot and then on the other side on the far side of your foot there'll be like little squidgy things and then a little that thing on the, fun on to the walk around in. honestly pause yeah. would be dope and it's like a you can get like a you know thigh high you know stocking sort of thing and okay. it looks super sexy and then little ears that go on that are shaped nicely that look go with your hair little clip in one so it's no band it's not a cross it's like they look like real ears poking out of your head they look like real ears poking Whoa, out of your head and, okay. then you can, and then the next step from that would be to do like full face makeup looking like the animal that you want to embody and then, you know, feel, it's like when you put on a dress, it makes you feel a certain way. You know, you put on a, a suit, it makes you feel a certain way. You put on, you put these, uh, something in your bum and you put, and you put, and you put the, <laughs> oh, yeah, the butt, up, butt plug tail. Yeah. yeah okay. And then you put the ears in, in your head, in your hair. And then you have like, you know, maybe like a furry sort of like vesty thing or, you know, then it makes yeah. you feel a certain way and it makes yeah. you, it can make it like extra spicy and sexy and then you know they can hold the tail while you're fucking and you can you know all sorts of things you know it's like and they can do poor hands as well like poor hand socky things oh you know God. so it's like and then you like a lot of female body people i think of you know i see as cats and so and they do purr or they meow at each other so you know that's like it's my conspiracy brain going, thinking they're like, oh, everybody's actually a fairy. Everyone's a fairy. You they know? just and don't they just know it yet. To, they just don't know it yet. And they just need to, you know, let that space be open in a I sexual mean, way. I'm like, you know? you've got me convinced. I'm like, give me a buckler tail and some fucking ears that look, what? Like, that's, really, it's really nice. And it's I also, really kinda, I also you know? kind of get the, like, because, the, like, I fucking love fantasy and sci-fi. I yeah. love fantasy movies. I, like, love fairies. 
I get, I get the like pixie ears and all that, but like, it's just not like, for, I can't actually like, it doesn't actually make me feel any certain way. And when I see it, I can't see, I can't see it as anything other than a costume. I can't get into the full like, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. so that's cool because I think it takes like a certain amount of like imagination and willingness and yeah playfulness and childlikeness and just like taking joy for like i think that's really fucking cool and i i feel like i'm so jaded i've lost it but i was definitely oh, like it yeah. was sounding super appealing how you were just describing it and i'm like wow that's i just this is what i mean like there's so much more depth to probably like most kinks honestly than anyone realizes yeah, really from is. the outside it's just like oh look at these guys like fucking in animal suits like yeah. so so with sex positions do you ever like actually fuck like animals is it erotic to think of being animals or fucking an animal or is it more just like embodying the not necessarily like an animal per se but it's more like an anthropomorphized animal which is like a humanized version of a okay. of an animal so it's not necessarily like a because bestiality is obviously a thing that comes up in the conversation but it's like it's nothing to do with that it's everything to do with the like um i don't know i guess the connection with the people yeah um, and like lost. would that have stemmed a lot from like the anthropomorphic porn that you like cartoon animal humans yeah, like yeah. and it's like, just, it's, like it's like hentai you know if anyone's seen hentai um, you know, it's like, um, which is the Japanese, the Japanese cartoon porn, basically. Yeah. And they got comics and manga and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. All that what's the difference stuff. between, um, I never know hentai and manga. What's the difference? No, not, I think I, I, I'm not a fucking expert on this, but okay. manga, I'm pretty sure is just means the, um, this like a series of comics. Oh. Um, and I don't th and I think some can be hentai and manga. Because they're just this, they're porno pornographic, but they're a series of books. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and then so um, yeah. it's like fiction and then erotic fiction. It's like yeah. the smart version of okay. So <laughs> let's get back on track. Okay. Cool. So it's not bestiality is its own kink or whatever. Well, bestiality is illegal. Yeah, a hundred percent. Bestiality means it's actually a different thing. Having sex with an animal, which yeah. you can't, which, which can't be consensual well, because which, animals can't give. Okay, sex. Well, obviously, but yeah. you can watch fucking porn on that, and that is a different thing. But the you furry can. thing is more like stemming from like yeah these like kind of sexy cartoon like fucking you know daisy bunny and mm. like lola. ariel the little mermaid i mean she's a fucking mermaid which is hot right? lola, like, lola bunny from um, oh yeah that's, space jam i think that's who i meant what did, who did i daisy, say daisy you're saying this like a nintendo bugs bunnies like, like bugs bunnies like girl bunny mario oh fuck daisy, i don't know daisy's from mario all right well i'm getting them all mixed up but they're like hot ass and there was even like an olympic um mascot the aussie olympics in 2004 maybe do you remember those mascots one of them i think it was sid i can't remember was it the platypus i don't know though he was a tank and like definitely the sexiest olympic mascot one of them, like we had this whole thing that our friends were like who's the hot like anyway, anyway i'm getting off track sexy <laughs> cartoons like yeah, anthropomorphized that's funny because people do think that cartoons are sexy you know, mm -hmm. people, and they don't even it's connect most people's these dots, first crush you know? is lola from space jam yeah. for sure okay so that's basically budding furriness furry yeah, that's that's like, uh, i would say that, that yeah you just sprouted this little sapling okay you're growing okay i get it heaps of cartoon characters although yeah. i don't know anyway okay cool so yeah, and there's you know there's hentai, there's there's comics about it. There's really good just like art of you know of individual characters that they've done, or you know, and Rule Thirty Four is a big <laughs> big part of it. Which What's is that? Rule Thirty Four is that if you, if you have heard of it, there's a porn of it. <laughs> yeah, basically. totally. And so they did like you know the Samsung. Um, I think she's called Cortana, and then so they made the Samsung woman into a real person and did a like a sexy version what? of the of the it's like siri for samsung phones so that is a sexy version of the, oh of the my god well they do like that it's like sexy coronavirus oh like, did honestly like, like a coronavirus the actual oh. camp the actual virus and it's it's like it's like got you know a nurse costume <laughs> what honestly it's actually it's, it's like Internet i don't know how they did it they made it sexy, fucking you know? funny they just it's fucking it's the most like it just cuts through everything <laughs> 
<laughs> there's like you, there's no there's no filter on any anywhere. There's no filter on Rule Thirty Four pages on the internet making porn of the most horrendous, horrific shit. You know. So wait, Rule Thirty Four is like this this sort of term. There's not a website called Rule Thirty Four which has no. all the most fucked shit. Okay. No, but there probably is one that has got right. that that so name, that's, the domain. Right. Yeah. I've actually never heard of that. I'm not, yeah, I just am not a child of the internet and I don't know these things, but it's a whole other world. And, I'm, and I've never, I've basically never watched porn. No so. one else has ever mentioned it to me. Oh, Rule 34? Where did you get it then? I don't know. I just have spent so much time on computers. Weird. All right, let I've me. I've found everything. It's not a quite <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, because, like, how old were you when you got into, like, um, furry porn? What? Did, wait, know. so there's is there furry porn where there's, like, videos of, I mean, Rule 34, yeah, of course there is videos ones. of people in fursona costumes fucking. But That's then there's not also so interesting, cartoon. though. You're into the cartoon. You can't be very, not many positions or very long in the sweaty ass hot I mean, suit. it sounds awful, yeah. I don't know, they're just, you it's all for the fantasy. You can't make out. I love a patch. Like, how, you can't even make eye contact. But with also it. there's like, I mean, just on that quick is like another sexy part. <laughs> For me, it's like pup hoods, and then they're getting a pup hood. What's that? It's like a, it's for pup play, which is another What's sort of play? Sec, sect of um. A pup, pup like puppy. Puppy. <gasps> like having a collar on and being led around, and then drinking from a bowl, and then having a cage, and uh, yeah, yeah. that's on the higher end of the spectrum. I don't know if I do the cage or drink from a bowl or just eating food off the ground or. So that's kind of like a, a, a sub genre of furry. Literally sub. Is a submissive. Oh my God, sub, 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 yeah. I'm a genius. Oh my God, no wonder I have a podcast. Um, yeah. um okay. Whoa, it's this is genre. like all just so interesting. But yeah, the pop hood you can get one that like comes out like this, and it, and the bottom is cut off, so you you can use your mouth. So, but then you can get other ones that are full face. Oh, pop hood, mouth. pop hood. Hood, and it's okay. made of leather. Oh wow. Okay. And it has some really tasteful it... ones. Yeah. Fuck man. I found I just... some good ones. Wow. I've been looking for ages. <laughs> Oh, like, so you, you're into pupping? Is that what you call it? Well, I'd like to try it. I have okay. never got the chance, but I know that it's something that I would love to do for sure. Okay. With the right person in the right. And, yep, but yep, a lot yep, of yep. people in the kink scene try these intense kinks in public first, and that's very exhibitionist. Oh. That's a pretty – and just because it's available there, then they're trying it there. But you can't really gauge well if you like that stuff or not if you're doing it in front of so many people if you're not oh. an exhibitionist person. Wow. So it's like then people are thinking that, oh, yeah, I don't like this kink or that kink. No, you did it in front of 23 people or you did it in a room full of loud music or what if you did it alone and you did it, you know, with one partner and so like about context and like certain setting, isn't it? It's like you can have such a different experience just just tweaking like the, yeah, the The sensory input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) straight up. Um, All right, so... I am looking at my question list because, like, I haven't even glanced at it. We've just been on a roll, but I just want to make sure I, like, ask everything I wanted to ask. Mm. Um, so, okay, well, I've got, like, so how, how have you gone um, grappling with, like, the, like, because I know, like, the shame, I suppose, because I know up until oh, um, recently, <laughs> you, you know, this is kind of a big deal in itself that you're, like, being vulnerable yeah. with us and sharing all this on a fucking podcast, which is yeah. so brave. But, like, this isn't, like, this is quite new territory for you being more open about it, right? Yeah, because I, I like, you know, forcing myself into anxious positions where I have a lot of resistance towards doing something and I like to just you know, put my head in the fire sometimes and then turns out the fire was water all the long. Yeah, you know? it's good. Take risks. And okay. then like, it's helpful for me because, you know, someone's giving a fuck about what I'm saying and then I'm able to expand on some thoughts that I haven't really been able to verbalize properly. You got ADHD, so verbalizing is very helpful and it's how I think a lot of the time. So mm. it's like, it's actually very, it's, it's all... It's all valuable. Did you, what was your question? So, like, yeah, how, how else have you been? How have you kind of gotten over the shame? Because you used to kind of, like, well, be still, a bit of an like, undercover fairy. Yeah, I mean, I'm still very, like, I guess a closet fairy, you know, but I'm not um, a closet fairy, but I'm not, um, uh, I don't know. Like, I think with a, with one partner who's, like, people who I pick to, to um, be in my life, I, I usually enjoy their company a lot, so then I open up to them and 
it doesn't I don't need to share it with everyone yeah, in no, the whole totally. world you know I mean and yeah. it's like I would love to be able to do that liberally and stuff but also it's like I don't need to you know it's like it, like with my non-binaryness like I want to tell people that I'm non-binary but it's just like it's not actually the world's business it's just actually you know not actually even such a big deal it's just who I am and you know and that's a big deal to me but I don't really care what it is yeah it's not deeply. like you have to like come yeah. out as a do you know what I mean like no. it's a private part of your like personal sexual expression and yeah it's like yeah guys I'm coming out I really love scat I really love yeah like no one does that for really any love. of their kinks like no. I guess though like no. people go to BDSM events and then they know other people in the community and it's very like so, didn't so see, much camaraderie I, 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 and bonding, but I, I, that big, that big massive one we went to, didn't see a fur. No, not not a fairy in sight. Fuck no. no. <laughs> where are the fairies at? But I well, think yeah, so but this like, is, where do you find them in me, Melbourne? Here, I'm right here. <laughs> but so, but there's no outward scene where people gather. Oh, well, I guess you said you, you weren't the, sure. Oh, they're probably all anxious as fuck. Maybe there is a bunch of them there, just yeah. they can't haven't got I mean, the courage yet. Well, like, do you so maybe to... I should be the one. I'll kick down the door. I'll wear the fucking sexy stuff, and people are like. Hmm. I like do it. Thing. You should do it. Yeah, I, I, when I get the opportunity for sure. Um, I just want to get the right things and the ears and the tail and all the stuff. And, oh yeah, because you don't have you know. like a, a fursona or a costume or anything like that. I do the, have a fursona, like the... but not a costume though. The wolf fursona. Mm. Does it have a name or anything, or it's just like? No, it's just an edge. I've written. I actually wrote it down oh. um, in my in my journal, which I don't have on me, but. You know, it's just like, yeah, all the, all the positive things that I could embody basically and no. differentiating them into yin and yang um, and then choosing, like sometimes I'll wear one necklace and not the other depending on what the day needs, like if I need more patience or if I need more fire, um, you know, that sort of thing. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck, okay, so interesting. Yeah. It's, um, it's, yeah. So, like, <sighs> what other stuff? in a sexual setting is like would would fall under like what would like maybe a potential sesh look like say you were able to express it like to the fullest because you had someone you're comfortable with and they were also into it which you know is hard to find someone here but like Mm. do you role play and or is it non-verbal well, like, is it you're talking like all the way down the line the maximal version of what i'm talking about maybe yeah i guess yeah. so well like maximally um you know yeah butt plug tail for both of us <laughs> <laughs> and then poor socks for both of us cute ears for both of us you know and then like sexy strappy lingerie you know mm-hmm. but then also make up you know and then also like like and this is ideal stuff for me but like um the you know yeah a whole role play you know mm-hmm. something that you know because there's lots of good examples of comics that i've read and my favorite comics that i've saved on reddit for fucking years you know so it's like i can reference one and then you can read lines you could even learn lines like there's <laughs> like a script of yeah, a comic yeah. erotic comic yeah because they're oh. yeah er- erotic furry comics you know so you can role play the characters in your yeah. erotic oh there's like one comics. that i love where it's like a a cheetah and uh and like a elk like a, not an elk uh, like a gazelle you know and the, so it's like then the femme-bodied person's in power because they're like trying to kill the the um the uh the, the gazelle and then they're like oh what's this and they're like you know then there's like a whole role play of, of sexiness you know and then this there and then he <laughs> it's always the same he's like he fucks her so good that she's too tired to chase after him and so he gets away whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what that's so funny oh my god okay this yeah. is so i just couldn't imagine yeah like i can't that's just one example as well. Wait, give me another. Give me another. More intricate. Okay, yeah. Like so, yeah, have awesome. you? Have you? What's your favorite one or something you've role played out like a scene? Oh, I've you... very rarely got the opportunity to do it, unfortunately. But I do. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I'll tell you the experience because it was like it still remains to be one of like my most, you know, my most interesting. It, sexual experiences to date Wicked. straight up oh we'd love to hear it um because it was with somebody who i who oh, i'd met in in you know the dorf and we had like the most beautiful like 
sexual connection like when we first got together it was just like you know we had like some of this like um like a tincture called love bubble that's made yeah, by yeah. magical people and then one. um they you know then my friend gave me this whole like ceremonial read into it which is like setting the intention and stuff and sort of expanded the you know experience a bit and i'm like this you know i'm always a skeptic so i'm like you know I, but i dispense this when i just leave then we're going into having sex and then we have sex um then you know my because i just i don't you ever um, you know take speed but i took speed and love bubbles you know, like a stimulant kind of like herbal yeah. like healthy little concoction that they like put in coconut with coconuts and stuff or like so, give yeah. you give you droplets eh? yeah something like that and, okay. then, and then my you know my my flop wasn't doing the doing the old stand-up machine you know okay. so having a hard time keeping yeah. an erection or well getting just one? getting one and okay. then she and then i remember her saying something so sweet to me it was just like we'll do the best with what we have you know and then that was like a that was the like central idea to our whole connection and relationship that yeah we were in. um and then you know when we kept connecting after that you know and we had a really sweet sort of romantic time and um you know we're both quite young you know like early 20s and um yeah and then we I remember one time she came to my place and we um yeah we read through like we like I showed her it's very an anxious thing for me to show people you know my kink and you know this is the stuff I like or this mm. is the, you know because it's like if the reaction is harsh then it makes me I'm such an insecure person it makes me feel really bad about, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have showed this to you. And I was like anxiety. Um, and then, you know, but she liked it. And then she liked one of the things that, um, one of the, you know, role plays that we were doing. And then, you know, that, uh, you know, one of the comics. And then, so I was like, oh, do you want to read it out? You know, they want to embody this. And then, you know, we were just reading it in like, a, just sitting next to each other, just mm-hmm. touching each other, just reading like it in a sexy voice um, to each other. We didn't remember the lines or anything like that. It was just like, you know, sexy back and forth and sort of forming the scene. And then, you know, sort of progressed. We got, you know, got amorous and, and, and hot and then we got together and, um, you know, sort of like I laid her down on the bed and, um, you know, yeah, we just, I, I remember so distinctly like when we were fucking, I think she was just riding me and then, I had this, the image that in my head was like her as a lion, you know? And to me, she is that like lion spirit. Was that who she was playing in the comic? Um, like no, the character she wasn't she was a lion. Oh, okay. No, but that's what, she, that's what I saw in my brain, you know? I was like, oh, whoa, you know, it's like, that was a trippy moment because we weren't like fucked up or high or whatever. It's just like, you know, and then she was, she had the same, um, when we discussed it afterwards, she had the same the same thing in her head. She it changed the way that um, like of the of like who it what it felt like she was fucking who it felt like she was fucking. It felt like a you know an animal, and we were able to embody and you know yeah express those those sort of more um you know animalistic sounds and you know and growl and wrestle and be a bit tough with each other and. You know, yeah. we're all in a like sexy way, and then you know, yeah, and hold that pleasure back, and then you know, you could hear, and because the sounds are so obvious, you know, it's like even with a dog, you know, when you've heard it, you know, when it's happy, you know, when it's angry, you know, it's like you, if you make similar sounds, then it's like, you know, so the, you know, whatever it is, the the growling, the whatever. Um, then it's pretty easy to gauge consent because you know when someone is feeling good or bad or this or that because you've, you know, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's this one is... of my best ones. I, that was beautiful. I, I yeah, I, I, that's the sex, kind of sexual experience I'd like to have often, you know. It doesn't have to be every time, but it would be nice. But, um, yeah, you know, like does it kind different of... Stuff, um... you know, different moods, different feelings. Yeah. Does it feel like something's missing for you in sex if you don't have an element of that? Um, in, in, I think the element is play, and I think if there's no play and it's just robotic, then yeah. But it doesn't have to be animal, animal-y no. to be play. No. That's just how I play, you know. Everybody, when they're a kid, 
has the the mm. blocks laid out very differently, you know. And sometimes they're not blocks. Sometimes I like to draw, you know. Dude, getting fucking poetic up in here. <laughs> All right, let me check if I've got any questions on my list I haven't asked yet. Um, yeah, play is a very central idea mm. for me in kink and in my own, um, you know, yeah, furry spirit. It's like I think it's the essence of life in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's a full spiritual kind of lifestyle for you, isn't it? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's like so much deeper than what I think anyone thinks when they think of fairies. Or, and like, do you think it's like, what are some other reasons why people, because that's your like reasoning for yeah. being really into it, like maybe wearing suits and stuff, like maybe what are some reasons or like things that people maybe misunderstand about why that would appeal to someone? Um. I guess firstly, like people think it's all a kink thing straight away, and they just think it's about people wanting to have sex in suits. You know, right. and that's like always the first look on any sort of kinky thing. Is that like people judge it, but you know, there's a thing in kink which is you can't yuck somebody's yum, mm-hmm. and that's a very good mental thing for life. Is like you can't, like I don't like that music. You don't like this music. You know, it's like we have different tastes, mm-hmm. and that's fine. That's okay. Um, what was the question? Um, oh, what are some misconceptions? Yeah. People think that... Um, or like other reasons why people are really into being a fairy. Um, yeah, just the anxious human beings, people who want to embody something else, people want their own sense of, um, you know, a little bit of escape from themselves or they just want to feel, they want to be able to embody. I think for me and for most people, it's they're wanting to be able to embody something that they really want to in themselves but... They have such a big resistance to mm. it in the the four four organized sexual um, conventions as they are. So then they want to escape from that, and their body, their their, their feeling, their will was trying to, but they haven't found the the right avenue for that. And for me, that avenue is um you know is kink and is um you know furriness. I'm actually so jealous. It honestly sounds dope. Anyone that's into BDSM and kink or has different things like this, it honestly just sounds so dope and immersive and like healing and intense and just like exciting and also like safe. You need so much trust and so safety. Trust. And it's like you can't yeah. bypass that if you're going to enjoy mm-hmm. it. Whereas so much mainstream More fun. sex. You bypass all of that. You, no one's having getting all the nice safety and like yeah. emotional tenderness and and kind of like consensual. You know, like man, the communication and the like, the empathy and the care for the other human that you'd have to have to then cultivate this beautiful space where you can be ultimately, ultimately, ultimately like free, vulnerable, authentic, experimental, creative, mm. expressive, mm. primal. Mm. What the fuck? I'm so jealous. The thing, but, but, <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm content with like, the that sex you, that I have. In the words that, you're, that you just said doesn't sound like anything like that. Any of those words are exclusive to kink. And the conversation, especially just no, the true. conversation before um, sex is like for a lot of gay people, it's just the, the first thing they do because a lot of them don't want for sure. They just want to have sex, but they don't want to penetrate. They don't want penetration. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mainstream that, you know, heterosex like, has been allowed to be so slack. Like all of these other like more fringe or minority kind of like sexual expressions or communities, like anything queer, like kink, mm. like poly, you just have to be so much more onto it with communication and consent and like having mature fucking adult conversations Mm -hmm. and all the heteromanies don't fuck with that they're just having the worst most unconscious (laughs) bullshit sex and i hear about it way too fucking much and like i'm not trying to yuck anyone's yum but my god guys it can be better and like I think so many people. It's not a people, kink, it's just bad sex, isn't it? Yeah, and people could just take a leaf out of the books of like, yeah, the the fucking fairies and the kinksters and stuff because yeah. like, yeah, it is such a such a s- amazing life skill to like get so much practice to be really communicating like in a mature kind of shame free way yeah. about about this stuff. Yeah, it just grows all of the 
and then the Every aftercare. Every all the things you need in between. Mm-hmm. It's like it grows that muscle of like checking in with your partner after you're done and just saying like, hey, how was that experience for you? Um, did you really like anything? Did you really not like anything? Did you, you know, it's like, or but not straight away. If I can let let, let them feel the, what they're feeling, you know, and it's like you guys can have a cup of tea afterwards and discuss things, and that's fun. Can be sexy, yeah. and it's a you know you figure out how to do it. The same thing with the pre-talk. Nothing is oh. hotter to me mm. than great communication it's literally mm. the hottest shit ever like my pussy throbs if someone's <laughs> just like like you know someone i'm attracted to or like potentially courting or whatever and they're yeah. laying down the fucking fat communication bars and i'm like um <laughs> excuse you yeah. you just turned into a 10 mm. baby like it's crazy it's mm. fucking crazy like i i love that it's definitely a non-negotiable for me <laughs> Um, anyway, got a bit sidetracked there. It doesn't but have to be complicated either. It doesn't. It's, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. You know? doesn't. But, I mean, I talk way too much on this podcast about how important communication is and I feel like I'm a broken record now. But is there anything like, okay, so actually something else, this isn't potentially really even fairy related, but I remember you, like, showing me some of your accessories, your sexual... Accessories. I would say... Like, well, sex accessories. Yeah, sex accessories. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, like, there was this, like, you were like, what, you've never seen a dick sheath? And I was like, um, uh, show me immediately. What do you yeah, mean a yeah. dick sheath? I wish and, I like, did, yeah. Fuck. So, like, that is... Explain that. That's like a... It, oh, so just, it's made by a company called Bad Dragon on the internet, the, the American company. They hand make um, sex toys. And some of the best quality ones that I've, I've seen. And Maybe I can get some free shit after dropping the name. So yeah, we... they're fucking they're great. <laughs> and, you know, it's worth a name drop. Like, they're See? fucking excellent. Cool. Um, they're great people to align with because of the quality of the product that they make and the, the communication was great, everything. And, um, okay, so like and, silicon? Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a, you know, it feels, it's like high quality, high quality, high grade silicon. And then so it, um, the, the cock sheath that I have. Oh, cock sheath. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. it's like it's called um Flint Flint's sheath. So Flint is like they haven't created a whole persona and a character, but they have like Jasmine's this and Flint's that. So it's like they're actually creating sort of furry names and oh, putting them on these things. Oh my god, it's kind like of a fairy a, dick. Yeah, it kind of create okay. a, a mental image of what this animal is. It's like could the dragon like. dick or Yeah, and it's like... got these like ribs that um come they're sort of flat and and smooth on the on the side, so it's like the head of of um, of a penis, um, and then it just like continue that, like the that, coronal ridge, but like a yeah, bunch of them, yeah, yeah, just a bunch of them like that, and yeah. then also like little um, dots that come out on the bottom that it would be that would feel really good, and because of this way the silicon moves, both parties can actually feel a lot of what's going on. Oh, so the and penis also inside this, like, silicon sheath. Yeah, inside. Also, it's almost like fucking a fleshlight because you're sort in. Sort of, but it's, like, it's not moving so much. It's, like, it's actually, like, it's holding on to the balls around it uh-huh. and it's got, like, a little sort of, make, not quite as tight as, like, a cock ring would be, okay. but it goes around your balls and then it, the head of the penis comes out and then uh, you um, right. then increases the size and the... And the width, girth, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, it, it's like a dick, ex- a girth extender. Yeah, that's why it's like, why is, it, why is even dick problem, dick problems? Why is dick size a, a big thing for anyone? Because you can literally just get a, a, a sex toy that changes that for you. And it's like, well, you can use sex extender. toys. So it's like all yeah, sorts of things. It's yeah. like there's there's something for everybody. Um, and then it's the best um, male-bodied sex toys I've seen on the internet. Cool. And that took me a, a long time. I also have a masturbator as well. Which is like a flashlight, but it looks like a dragon's tail, and that oh. one's called Jasmine, and it's got like you know, it kind of looks like they've lopped the legs off, <laughs> and it's flat on one side. Oh, so it's, it's got like, like a little. Um, it's got her pussy and tail. Yeah. yeah. And chopped and you can off, hold a, the chopped tail. off the tummy and the, the thighs, so it's like oh wow, it's like a full. And the, the top of the torso, I think maybe uh, less. Wow. Okay. How like how big is it? Well, it's not. Okay. It's not that big. Like, Fuck, this big. is so fascinating. And it's heavy and nice and like you can. You can probably fuck it. Yeah, you can probably fuck it. It's a bit too tight for me, but yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, it's big dick no, of it. Just, no, I'm joking. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. <laughs> no, thank you classes, so much for sharing that. all of this with me. This is so interesting. It's a laugh. Um, built to laugh. How often do you get to use your cock sheath? Rarely. 
again, that's like a thing that I think I would like to use with a developed partner, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. the, it, and it's like, if any people don't know, but it's like, if they, they get to know me, they're like, look past the exterior, they're like, you know, the mask presenting whatever, you know, then it's like, oh, there's all these other layers down here, you know, and it's like, oh, have you seen my sex? I'm only going to get whipped the sex toys out when it's the right time. And I think there's a lot of people like that as well. Oh, for sure. Because they realise how fucking kinky they are and they've got to test the waters because they've fucking, they've, they've just 100%. put people straight in the water and then they're like, well, I can't swim. It's so courteous like, to like... just, you know, <laughs> just ease them into it and it's better for, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, no, totally. I feel like um, there's certain things that I think, you know, better to just really get that out of the way immediately and communicate it. And, I, like, it's it's even similar. Like, I've interviewed people on this podcast, I've done some episodes on SDIs and mm. on herpes, and I think it was the woman I was interviewing on herpes. Um, oh fuck, the the yoni nutritionist. Yeah. She, um, she was sort of saying like with disclosure stuff, you know, she's tried both ways, and she's like tried if she's got no active outbreaks, you know, just wears condoms, she'll like mm. kind of not tell them until later, but then she feels, Meh, and so she started telling them like straight up, like hey. And, and people can, you know, respond really beautifully and people can respond really, really badly, badly. Yeah. and it's really fucking vulnerable and she just has to, she's like, I don't, you know, I don't have as much casual sex and fuck with people that I don't think can handle a mature conversation and yeah. it's a really Fair amazing, enough. like, thing that separates the wheat from the chaff because if they're not emotionally mature enough to have a fucking conversation about yeah. STIs and like you know then how are they going to do consent you know yeah so right. anyway it sounds kind of like similar and again communication yeah yep what are we talking about saves the nation saves the nation oh yeah sex toys so okay that's fucking fascinating cock sheath that looks like a fursona's like the yeah, very like dick. dragon dragon, dragon. yeah 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 the the dragon i remember seeing a um, the a thing about dragon dicks that lay like oh, yeah. eggs into yeah, they have and ones stuff. That, they have that on the website. Yeah, you know, have, it's like, so... ones that come and ones that lay eggs. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. Demogorgon. Oh, it's like blowing you know? my mind because I had no idea the extent of that. <laughs> Octopus. Toys. Yeah, yeah. Then... That's a hint, I think, right? Mm. Yeah, Octopus tentacle porn. porn. Tentacle porn. Yeah. Fuck me, it's so interesting and so not my thing, but it's God. A Awesome to so you can get like about. long floppy ones as well. They're like really long ones. It's pretty crazy, man. People imagine. got like I've just seen like I've seen some athletes on the internet. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some yeah, sexual yeah. athletes, like oh just God. I don't know. Even just seeing someone getting fisted so, oh, on like, like athletic the, just ads, bouncing like. on this like it's literally like it, it's shaped like a horse's dick and it's huge. Oh my and they're gosh. just fucking going at it. And it's like, well, I'm happy you're getting this somewhere because I can't provide that for you. Like, you know, it's like, but I think this is why we all need to get, you know, comfortable with sex toys because it adds so much more or different opportunities for fun because some things we just can't give to our partner physically, physiologically, mm. we can't. So it's like, may as well just, you know, yeah. Have a little little taste test and see it's, if the it's if a sex like act. Yeah, it's a it's sex act. Total fucking hack. I love it. Yeah, I guess I've just like I'm just really sheltered and I've never like felt um the 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 need for a sex hack. I've had a pretty easy cruisy time of it. Really, well, no, that's not true. I have I was really fucked up about sex. That's why I'm doing this work now. But mm. since everything's being peachy, like I don't know. But I think I guess because I don't um have any kinks that i've you know discovered yeah and stuff it's pretty like smooth sailing in terms of just like i don't really have to have any of those sorts of conversations with people like I i'm one of those people that used to have like mainstream heterosexual fucking sex mm -hmm. and not communicate at all and yeah. it was bad sex <laughs> like yeah. you know anyway so yeah, yeah like two bodies there but and i really but i wouldn't have i wouldn't have thought to use toys to enhance that i guess there's like toys toys can be bypassing sexual connection and then toys can be enhancing things and i suppose i don't know i just get off on human connection i don't yeah. really need um uh, much else so. no it's not i don't you know yeah i don't think it's like you know, your partner's not, like, because people usually use sex toys, like, oh, my partner's not satisfying me enough, I need to add this extra thing. I just, I think there's a, a spot for it where it's like, oh, we are having great sex, but then, you know, let's try this thing. And then you try it, and when you're having the, the dildo conversation, 
you realize that like, oh, hang on, when I put this in you <laughs> and I do this and, and it is at this speed, then you're like, oh, that feels good. And if I, and then you're learning some sort of like consenty things accidentally because you're like, oh, there's a, I need to do this at a particular speed or I need, it needs to be positioned like that or that feels good or this feels good. You know, you're not just going to, you know, whip a dildo into somebody. It's like, you know, you're kind of forced True. into having those conversations, you know, so I think in Do a you way think it's everyone healthy. does though? Not, no, not everyone does. I've heard some pretty bad. I've heard some pretty bad. Actually, that was something I wanted to, we were going to talk about was like not specifically fairies but like with the kink and BDSM world, like there are definitely some people getting around doing some damage because they're not doing it in an integral and consensual way yeah. and it might be because they're actually fucking say it's an or a malicious or a narcissist or like they're actually just really ignorant of you know how to do it yeah there's definitely well no. it's just because it's easy for like big energies to take over those spaces you know and mm. especially in if it's a it's it's easy for that to happen in a room full of people at a kink club so what happens when you're in a bedroom alone with somebody and they're a big energy and you just don't know how to speak for yourself you know i think there's dickheads everywhere who make things horrible for people and bastardize what the yeah, and say, like, is. oh, I'm a dom, I'm into kink, but they're actually just a fucking psycho. Yeah, they that think that means that what it. they say goes. Because, like, you know. I had a friend who will remain anonymous for obvious reasons who, like, wouldn't mind me sharing this. And and mm. actually she's probably going to come onto the potty and talk about it. We've been meaning to do it for fucking months. But, like, I can't remember the exact details, but, like, her story is, like, you know, she hooked up with this dude, went back to his house, and he had housemates and stuff, and he, like, she had never really experienced any kind of kink stuff, but she was sort of young and, like, oh, I guess I'll just, you know, see how it goes. And he, like, he he tied her up, and she was, like, okay, like, I guess we'll do that. But then he, like, shoved a fucking butt plug, like, a vibrating, a vibrator up her butt that didn't have a flange, and like any pre-conversation any no like and then happen. he left the room oh man i would and that. left her there tied up with a fucking vibrating egg in her ass that that's she horrible. couldn't get out and it was fully traumatic like for her it's fucked and that's like the most unethical fucking thing i can it's think gross. of so like yeah exactly and that stuff does happen shit. and he would be like yeah i'm like i'm like a dom and i can like fucking i'm on this power trip like you know it's just the absolute opposite of what bdsm is all about at its essence, if it's done well and with integrity. But, like, that stuff's happening. And, like, the choking, like, because people see shit in porn now and yeah. they're just, like, let's just fucking, like, choking out people so normal and hot and then they're, like, crushing tracheas and stuff. And, like, well, I think it's because it's, like, it's just part of the, you know, the default um, network of humanity. Like, we would put a masculine male-bodied person in a position of, domination and then they think that they're entitled to everything when they put themselves in that realm mm. but really all the stuff that went on there should have been a pre-conversation like hey this is what i want um can you fulfill these things if she's like no then the answer is fucking no mm. and then you know there's just so many things wrong there it's like you know yeah and tying somebody up i'm not sure how many times you'd seen him but that's like to me that's a quite a that takes a lot of trust mm -hmm. um but people don't realize how vulnerable the space is and if they've never done it before and then they're tied up and they're like hang on a second i can't fucking move like if they wanted to kill me right now mm -hmm. they could just kill me right now you know and then someone shoves something up your fucking butt mm -hmm. you know and it's yeah. like and then it, it, it that would be a, that's an absolutely fucking horrible experience yeah yeah that's fucking awful i uh... Yeah. What was the other part? You said something about um, horrible experience. It's awful thing. I think just that it can be done really badly and on well, choking, I'm which is big, which is probably the bigger one, because people, it's like actually choking is quite a hec like it's not quite a, dangerous. a hectic thing. It's more of like a, a, a far down the line thing in BDSM, right? Like you would trying advanced to, uh, yeah 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 it is a, it's an advanced thing um and then you'd want to know um that your partner's really across like the being able to control the pressure around your throat and not even necessarily choking you the feeling of just having someone's hand there is actually really um can be really intense 
totally. just of some, having someone's hand there. And like because of this, now when I have a sexual experience with female body people, I'll make a point that if we do some sort of like ne- some there's some neck things going on, I'll put my hand up to their neck and they'll be like, I'll say, is this okay? And then they'll say, yeah. Or they'll say, no. You know, or, and I'll be like, I'll be like, Mm-mm. or and they'll be like, mm, or, mm. and then I won't. I won't go really hard and I'll, and they'll, and I'll ask them pressure notes. And then as they, uh, as I, uh, as I let it go, I usually hold my hand there. So then I'm telling their body that they're safe. Yeah. Because their, definitely a their way neck to do it. has been treated so badly. And like when I was with a, um, a female bodied person, one of my ex partners who had, has a baby then her her um, boobs were getting gnawed on and used used a lot unconsensually by this baby. So I would treat them very nicely, mm-hmm. you know, and I would be nice and gentle. And I feel like that's like should be is undervalued in what it can actually provide in terms of like a sensual, um, sexual like exciting, pleasurable experience for both parties. Because to see your partner really truly relax and and feel that great relief is such a rare experience in the world generally. So we can provide that for each other. Like, fuck, well, we and that's why it's so sad know? that like literally now it's like kids are doing that to one another the first time they ever had se- have sex with zero consent and they think yeah. it's normal because they see it in porn and yeah. they like they're doing it. I've heard stories of like, you know, 14 year olds kind of doing it the first time they had sex and like, but, and both of them being kind of traumatized and really not liking it, yeah. and then like going and talking at this therapy circle or some shit. I don't know, but like, mm. you know, it was really like sad and very like indicative of like what's kind of happening, and that's really dangerous because you can genuinely do so much damage. Like, yeah, you're going really hard. You know, yeah. uh, you can. It's not even that hard to like fuck it up. Like, it's it's been it's one of the biggest, isn't it? The biggest sex injury. Like, people actually do die from it or get damaged, like, damaged tracheas and, like, um, you can you can fuck some shit up, you know, and it's very common that people do because they're not actually, you know, educated, experienced BDSM practitioners yeah. or kinksters. They just are fucking acting out shit they've seen in porn because they think it's normal. Well, they've just done it if they, ha- if they haven't done a bit of jits. Um, Jiu-jitsu. Yeah, because it's a, it's a that's an air choke. It's not a blood choke. Well, blood yeah, choke most is people one, haven't done jiu-jitsu. Blood that's choke is one thing. where you cut off the, the, the actual blood supply to their brain and they'll pass out. The other one will just suffocate them and they'll um, you know, die from asphyxiation. In, in, in the, um, Fuck, sounds yeah, hot. Long enough. But, um, <laughs> yeah, shit. It's just people just need to be way more gentle and just you know, I think with sexuality overall. And I think, yeah, that's true. and then work your way into intense moments, big intenseness, and then it comes away. So we appreciate the intenseness. And then, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. And also, like, on the choking thing, it's like, there's a lot of, I'm sure I've heard there's a lot of female body people who, when they're young, they're offered it as a thing that because they thought that that was their role, they're playing that role. They're like, oh, this is what my partner wants, this is what they'll enjoy. And then the partner, neither of them, are enjoying it she didn't want to do it he he was doing it because she offered it and then this is his role but it's actually it's confronting choking somebody it's confronting hurting someone that you're supposed to have a pleasurable it's but that's the the bdsm community understands that that confrontation and they use that as like yeah. sort of an exciting thing yeah but if you don't understand that then now you, it's yeah, just again, acting out you're just traumatizing yourself. Well, like, yeah, that's what I was saying about those fucking hell. fourteen-year-olds. All right. Well, anyway, we are way over time. We better wrap up. But is there anything else you wanted to add that you want everyone to know about fairies, about whatever you know, stuff we've talked about? Because um, this has been highly fascinating. Just quietly, like what the fuck? Probably mm. one of my faves. Oh movies. great! Because it's I'm just so like it's that. just so rare that you get. I would say, and like people write into me, fucking tell me. Like sometimes I feel like I'm throwing content out into the vacuum here. But like, let me know how you found this. Whether it was accessible, whether you um you found it also fascinating and like like you know deeply insightful into like a world that you wouldn't have access to to normally because that's I find talking to people about these things incredibly fascinating and rewarding because 
I just could never possibly hope to understand it if I wasn't allowed to ask all of these really personal questions and them to like generously share their knowledge and experience and vulnerability like and you know you've just done this on a potty and I think that's sick and it's rare and Mm. you know I hope lots of people listen to it whether they're into furries or BDSM or not like I think it's important to understand that side of the kind of perspective because like I, I, I wouldn't normally being the you know pretty sort of non kinky person that I am. The nil nil. I love that. <laughs> nil nil. Um, um, yeah. Well, the last thing I would like to say, I guess, is just that I think to me it's just a belief. Um, I think in everyone there's something kinky, there's something strange, there's something that they, ooh, I don't know if I should say that. And like they'll think I'm weird or they'll think I'm strange or they'll think I'm this or that. That. Uh, explore that feeling and then open up to your partner um, or significant other about that or your friends, people who would actually hear you and not judge you and understand what you're going, what you're experiencing and what you're desiring and then allow someone the space to come in to that, to there and hold you in that space. I think that's not always an option for some people, though. Like, it would be hard to find that. And some people don't even have friends that they can talk to about sex, regular Mm. sex, let alone... Go online, go on Reddit, you know, find some people in a sub, in a subreddit, find a Discord chat, um, you know, find, you you may, or if you don't have a community, make a community, you know, just reach Mm. out, find kink events and, you know, try to connect with the right people. Get in touch with Liam. You can touch with me. I'll, yeah. For sure, I'd love to talk. I would love Let's to talk about it. community. I actually interviewed um, a beautiful yeah. person. I would totally do that. I'd love to you hold should. the furries down. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I think it's just such a beautiful space for everybody. And, you know, we can make it really, really safe and cozy and fluffy and, you know, like sure. just chill and, you know. Big hop, big hip hop, and good times. <laughs> yeah. So just oh, uh, crunchy party with the message. neon lights and like you know, <laughs> what the, the fluff? Uh, yeah. So takeaway message: just give it a go, gang. Just take the risk, give it a little try, see if you can find someone to connect yeah. with on this, and like find that spot in yourself. What does it mean? What is it to you? You know, it doesn't need to be with anyone else necessarily. Just, just explore that. Write about it draw it look at the porn you know see if it excites you if it doesn't if it's not your your yum then if it's not your yuck then you know maybe it's something in between and you can just keep exposing your point and like and and you know that will dismantle some of the layers of shame that might have prevented you from acting on it or exploring it before it might just slowly start to thaw out or like melt away the um the and layers shame. of shame and, and if it's all the way up here and judgment self-judgment and internalized misogyny and like you know like we're yeah. fucking we're battling against it so like i guess you know in the process of starting to become open to leaning into it or exploring it just like knowing that there are other people that are into this and yeah, feel this way. Not alone. Like, yeah you're not alone and there's no need to be ashamed no how good yeah shame has no place in in no in the bedroom. <laughs> Dude, this is so great. Thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure. Bloody love you. Any, anybody time, mate. Sweet. Um, yeah. Right.